very brief. I just want to share with you. brief I just want to share with us like to share with us on how to activate the power of God in your life how to activate the power of God in your life please move volume to this mic how to activate the power of God in your life how to activate the power of God in your life. Amen. Thank you. Now, we're going to take our reading. The power of God is what every believer has been given to by redemption. The moment you come to Jesus, the power of God has been given to you. You believe in him. He gives you his power. John 1 verse 12. I'm going to quickly show you five ways you can activate the power. Then we'll close. Then we'll practicalize it. flow in God's power um, but let's begin with these scriptures very quickly and but as many as received him to them gave he the power of be, sorry to them gave he power to become the sons of God even then that believe in his name hallelujah even they that believe in his name so you see power of God is given to two set of people those that receive him and those that believe in his name the question this morning, do you believe in Jesus? Let me ask people, in do you believe in Jesus? Then you have his power. Have you received Jesus? Then you have his power. Do you believe in Jesus? Huh? Have you received him? These are two things you must answer to yourself. Do you believe in Jesus? Have you received him? Then you have his power. The power of God is durable the power of God is everlasting the power of God is superior than every other power we have seven levels of power number one is political power I want you to understand this dimension before I move on political power men that have this one they become president they can make any decision say anything, he governs on every other person. Just like one day Nebuchadnezzar woke up and said, nobody should pray except on the God of Babylon. Whether you're a Christian, your prayer life has ceased. That's why when we come to voting, we are wise. We are saying, That's all this thing we are talking about. One decision can stop you coming from coming to, you can't step in here. You can't come to church. No church will be open. That's political power. That's why they say Christians should go to politics. Next year, I'm going into politics. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you are looking at me. Oh, will I still be pastor? Yes. But I'm going to join a political party. Obtain a form. Obtain a card. And become a member from my village. Because why? I understand the power. Then we'll have military power. Some of them used to rig election. When they stay, the military, they position themselves. They can't do anything. They are in charge. They can dismiss any government and take over. They call it, uh, what they call it, coup. They begin to rule. Military power. Then we have what we call occultic power. Diabolic power. That's where people, occultic men and women, they exercise this power. Praise the Lord. So we have what we call occultic power. Then we have what we call intellectual power. That one is education. You see somebody is a professor. He will just sit down in one place and decide what happened with his intelligence. Say he's a professor. 
every professor used to do teach students. You might you do exam my practice, they will they will sack you. I mean they will question you, they will deal with you. When you see a professor, when it comes to election, they, they will my practice election. Then nobody will question them. That error must be corrected by the power of God. So what we call intellectual power? Men with intellectual power, they create things. Intelligent. Sub mathematics. Sub things. Create aeroplane with the intellectual power. Then we have what we call. Have you seen the difference between microphone power now? This this one and this one. So power is in level. Okay, now we have what we call um, physical power. Like Kiliwi and Wachuku. You see the man, he can carry a car, jack it up. Where get the power? God give him. You see some men, some women, when they handle you with one hand, you are gone. So we have powers. Then we have what we call financial power. That one, not everybody they look for. <laughs> Where you get power? They boutique. They say you don't carry power. You get money. Power. But let me tell you something. Above all this power, God's power is highest. When you have God's power, a politician will come and say, Daddy, pray for me. Now I be president, oh. You go go redeem camp. You say, I beg, uh, touch my head. You go meet a pastor, please. You go see, you go, you will see a military man, officer, general. He will come to church and he's an archer. God's power is superior than all power. No matter the power you have, make sure you have God's power. Make sure that the power of God is at work in your life. Because with God's power, every other power bows at your feet. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's very vital you understand the power that we're talking about. Then we'll have the necessity of power. Why is power of God necessary for a believer's life? Before I tell you how to activate it, I have 30 minutes. Please time me for 30 minutes. Eh? Give me 30 minutes to preach this thing. And I'm done. Now hear me everybody. We'll have, why is the power necessary? Please more volume. Why is power necessary? Number one is to initiate motion. You need the power of God for you to move. In fact, you need power for movement. To move from where you are to where you're supposed to be in life. You need the power to move there. In fact, there's a law that says everything is a state of, 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 of a low state or a state of rest until power, until a force is applied. You need the power to move. So we need power God to, for motion in life. For movement in life. For speed in life and destiny. Why is the power of God necessary in a believer's life? Is to facilitate action. The power of God is necessary for you to facilitate action. I can tell you, you can be in one spot year in year out until power is activated. Hallelujah. In fact, as a matter of fact, if, if you don't engage the power of God, it was until the power of God came upon them on the day of Pentecost. That's why church began. Church began. Before it was synagogue. That was the day the church was bet or better. Why? Power from on high came on the people on the upper room. And that was the beginning of Christianity. All over the world, the church is being opened to today because of the power from above. I pray for somebody here. The power from above will enter your head today. The power from above will be activated in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, why, why do we need power? Necessity of power number three is to activate function. It's to activate function. Some things will not function and the power is in place. You can have a refrigerator, have eggs in your house, but until power is connected to that house, it will not work. Build new houses, like where we live, uh, there's no light there, we have everything there. If you don't put on jail, you can't have it. Build house, 
furnish it with the electronics and on the power is supplied to them. None of those things work. This microphone will not be working if the gen goes up. So you need power to survive as a Christian in this wicked world where diabolic power is op in operation, occultic men is in operation, where men are using different power to do their business and do all kinds of things. See people in the compound you live there. Like on Friday we are praying. A, a, somebody in the compound was talking. You know, you see, say I've gone to India to carry power. He said, I will. I, I've gone to. I will go to another country, looking for power. That's the landlady of a, somebody in the compound. I mean, of us were here on Friday. You saw it. Yeah. So that is why we need power. You know, just a Christian. Christianity is not in words. It's not in speech. It's not for. It's in power. The kingdom of God is in power. So why do we need power? Number four is to actualize intention. Is to actualize our purpose on the face of the earth. Is to fulfill destiny. You need the power of God to fulfill your destiny. Some of us, where we came from, powers there, nobody will rise. One man is saying, I'm the strong man of this family. People will not marry. People will not make it. Listen to me, I'm glad to announce to you, any power speaking in your family against your peoples, they shall be silenced. Any power speaking against you shall be closed. I pray for 17 of you. The power that is speaking in your foundation, they will be neutralized. They will be neutralized. Nothing frustrates good intention like powerlessness. Good purpose, good vision, good plan for your life. When you were born, your mother said, you're going to be a professor. They say, this is what you're going to become. They tell you, this is what they said of you. But now, you are not, 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 you are not near to it. Is it that the prophet was wrong? No! Is it that the intention of God in your life was wrong? No! It's because powerlessness, there's no power. Look at the song we are sang today. They just sang, they say, according to the power that is at work in me, let mountain, you know power in heaven, no? the one that is in you, let mountain flee. Let mountain disappear. Let, I don't know how they put the song this morning, but that is the actual thing I'm preaching here. Until the power of God in your life is activated, mountain remains, obstacle remains. Hallelujah. In the first seven, I said to be working, let's pray and activate the power. Just praying and all it means that. And you can imagine on your own, you do this daily, intentionally. So, why do we need power? Necessity of the power of God is to terminate oppressions. Isaiah 10 verse 27 is to terminate affliction and terminate affliction and oppressions in your life, in your family. That is why we need the power of God. So terminate affliction and oppression. Isaiah 10 verse 27. He said, it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of power. Come on, say power. power. That is anointing. I see somebody here going home here with power. I see somebody here living here with power. Another reason why we need so it takes power to defeat your oppression. I said power is needed to do what to terminate the oppressions of the enemy, the manipulation of witchcraft in your family. You need the power. So we say that it takes power to defeat the oppression. The power of God is available to delete afflictions and that of those around your life. You need the power of God. Number six reason why the power is necessary is to fulfill destiny. Is to release destination. Is to manifest destiny. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. I see somebody in this meeting this morning activating the power of God. Is to actualize destiny. That is why we need the power of God. 
Acts chapter 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Chapter power. You need this power. Otherwise, you are destined the main local destiny. From Umudim. From Umudala. You just did there. You are destiny is a global destiny. What God has called you to do, you will do it. But hear me, you will fulfill your destiny. Because the power of God is on your side. I say God is on your side. His power is on your side. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about? So before he went about, he had to be anointed. Doing good, healing all that we are doing, and God was with him. I see God working with you now. Quickly, how do I activate this power? I know as I'm preaching, you are excited, man. I need this power, I need this power. Then, how do I activate it? You have it already, it's already there. John 1 verse 12 says, If you believe in Jesus, he gives you the power. If you have received him, as many that receive him, to them he gave power. It's not that he's going to give, he gave them already. So the moment you receive Jesus, he gives you power. The moment you believe in his name, he gives you power. His name, he gives you power. Come on, say I'm powerful. Say, devil, hear me. I'm coming with power. Say after this service, I'm tackling that mountain with power. I'm facing that opposition. Look at the man called David. Everybody was afraid of Gloria, but this guy knew that God power was with anyone that believed in God. A little boy. He appeared before Gloria and said, Everybody, he said, No, no, no. He knew him who he was. He knew that God has given him power by covenant. That's when he came, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistines? Because one with God is with power. Why the armies? They didn't know. They were thinking that he's to carry military power. Uh, let's face Goliath. Goliath was there. He said, bring somebody. And David, a little boy, brought down Goliath. Not because of his physical strength, but because of the power of God walking inside him. Every mountain in your life, they will be crushed today by the power of God in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So how do I activate the power of God? Number one, I say, when we are sincere, when we sincerely confess our sins and pray earnestly, that's when we activate the power of God. Yes. A can I walk in the power of God if you are living in sin. Take note of this and I'm telling you. That's one of the leakage of power. The greatest one is living a life that doesn't glorify God. You will lack power carrying Bible. Within you, you know. You carry Bible, but within you, you know, say nothing there. You tie her car, but within you, you know, not, I'm, I'm, I'm empty. Some things you go wrong. Because sin removes boldness from you. He said, the righteous shall be as bold as lion. So when you are living a, a, a life of unrighteousness, you are just like a goat. Afraid. Everything you run, like a dog. Everything you just run. Everything you run, like a dog. Everything. So here it is. James chapter 5, verse 16. So when we sincerely confess our sins and pray earnestly and persistently, such prayer is an avenue of power. Of God to be made manifest in our life. Um, James 5 verse 16. Can we look at that? So it's amazing how you should understand that the power of God has been given to you, and you must know how to activate it. So it's by sincerely repenting, confess your fault one to another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much. You see that? Prayer makes power available. But not praying in sin. It's praying in righteousness. The prayer of a righteous man. Prayer of what? Plenty of righteous people. A righteous man. A righteous man. 
That's one way you activate the power. Power gets activated by a righteous man prayer. A righteous woman prayer. So there is great power in prayer. So start your day with prayer. Continue your day with prayer. End your day with what? Prayer to tap into the power of God. That is number one. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. Start your day with prayer. Continue your day with prayer. And end your day with praying. So you can tap into the power that has been made available for you. Can you sleep in the night? So they, they choke your neck. G, 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 G. You want to call Jesus? Now G, they call G. You know what is G? Yam, yam, yam. Because they know what make you talk and because they compress you. And you say be Christian, they go to church. It's because the power you have, you are not activating it. You don't have to activate it. I can't make someone press me in the night. It has um, th th I wasn't born again. Because every night I must pray before I sleep. It's not like you bring out the pot of stew, drop it, and, and, and fly will come. The, that fly wants to die. He want to go to hell. Just he want to die just there. But he can't perch. Hear this. Let's look at our second Corinthians 10 verse 3. Second Corinthians 10 verse 3. Alright, quickly. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So prayer makes you a man of war. A man of warfare in the spirit. Hallelujah. Gives the power to war. Number two way we can activate the power of God is when we understand who we are in Christ. When we understand who we are, as you know, who are you? Paul, I know. Who are you? Um, Jesus, I know. This is a, who are you? So identity must be settled. The matter of identity must be settled. If you want to operate in the activate the power of God, you must know who you are. Hallelujah. And exercise your spiritual authorities when you know who you are. Now, first king chapter 17, verse 1. When you know who you are and who you are in Christ and who Jesus has made you, listen to me. This is what made David different from other people. He knew who he was. Ah, this man will kill you. He said, this man, forget him. He said, because God has helped me to kill bear and lion. He said, the same God. He knew who he was. They that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit know who you are. Identity matters a lot. Give me the scripture quickly. So we must know who we are. And Elijah, the teacher who was of the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be due nor rain three years. Can, can we complete the last one? According to my word, You know, see, um, he does not need God, sorry, he doesn't need God to say that thing. He didn't say, did say according to the word of God. He said, according to my word. He knew who he was. He knew himself that if he says it, God has spoken it. That's what you know yourself. Who God has made you. He knows what they carry. The power of God. How to activate it? I know who you are. Give me that water there. This is ordinary water. I want to show you something. I know who I don't open it. I know who I am. This is water, for example. I know who I am. I know what I carry. I know because my hand have touched this water. I prayed over it. It's not ordinary water. If you touch it, it can carry you down. If it drink it, anything that is in your body will come out. If I put it in your hand, it can stand for a long time. It can break you down on the floor. Why? I know who I am. I know that me, in me is the presence of God. 
in me is the grace of God. In me is the power of the Holy Ghost. So that understanding has made me to operate in the dimension of the power. Hallelujah. So, this one now, if I say, okay, let me give it to some individual and I say, okay, take it and hold it. In a few minutes, you will see the person was start turning around. Turning around. Something was happening. So that's how the power of God flows. You activate no who you are, number one. Now, now look at this. Um, the power of God. This is the power of God in knowledge. The power of God flows. How you can activate it is by knowing, understanding who we are in Christ and exercising our spiritual authority by standing on the word of God. That's how the power of God flows. That's why the Bible says in Job chapter 22 verse 23, it says, you shall decree a thing, it shall come to pass. So the power of God flows by you knowing who you are in Christ, not in your family. I know you are not, you are the adult of the family, you are the firstborn of the family, you are the um I don't know what they call you in the family, not that one I'm talking about. I'm talking about who you are in Christ, your spiritual identity in the Lord, who Christ has made of you. When you know these things, then the power of God flows and you will declare his word. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Let's look at this. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Hallelujah. The power of God. Ephesians 1 verse 17. Ligo Bramaladish. Zengo Brahataya. That the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. What is he giving you? And the revelation in the knowledge of him. God, Paul was praying for his followers, his church people, that they will go give them wisdom and spiritual understanding in the knowledge of God. No, go to move on, move on. We'll stop at verse 19. So they will know who they are and the power God has channeled towards them. That's out of here. He said that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Why he called you. What is the riches of the glory of his sent. In the, of the inheritance in the sent. Verse 19. Amazing. He said what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Towards us who believe. So your eyes need to be open to know. How be aware. Towards us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. Hallelujah. So we activate the power of God by what? By knowing who we are in Christ. If you don't know who you are, you don't know what is yours. You know, I can tell you. We were told this story, a man, a man entered a airplane. He didn't know that all the things he was, he was asking for, all the things he was praying for, all the things they were giving people in the, in, in the aircraft has been paid by him. By that ticket, he didn't know. So he was dead. Everybody's eating. He didn't eat. They called him. No, no, no. So when they came down, the man said, What did you not eat? He said, He didn't have money. He said, Ah! He didn't have money for six hours flight. He didn't have money. He didn't know that that ticket that you paid at the aircraft covers all the food. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, your salvation, the, the day you believe in Jesus, all the power has been given to you. Everything. Everything has been given to you. It's time to begin to exercise it. It's time is begin to deploy it and channel it into your life. Now, number three way you can activate the power of God as we begin to round up is when we are full of faith, we'll be full of gospel. When we exercise our faith, we activate the power of God by faith. A life of faith is a life of power. Mark 2, 17 verse 20. A life of faith is a life of what? Power. There is power in faith. 
Mark 2, 17, 20. And Jesus heard it. And he said unto them, They that are whole have... Matthew 27, please. Matthew 20. Sorry, 17, 20. This is not 17, 20. I'm, I'm reading another thing. Not Mark, Matthew. I guess somebody is there. So, when you have faith, Bible said by faith, the elders obtained good report. By faith, they were able to quench the mouth of lion. By faith, the dead ones among them were raised to life. Okay, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, if you have faith as, as, as a green of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be removed here yonder, a yonder place, and it shall be, it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. So when you have faith, you are, you are, you are full of power. You activate God's power by faith. By faith. You release the gospel by faith. So if you are waiting for all things to be normal, before you take a step and, and confront the mountain, you may wait for a long time. Hallelujah. So by faith, we are the gospel. Hallelujah. So here it is. There is power in faith. May the Lord help us to overcome every form of unbelief. Say amen. And increase our faith in him in Jesus' name. I say may the Lord help us to overcome every form of unbelief and increase his power in our life in the name of Jesus. Lastly, if you want to operate in God's power, this, if you want to activate the power of God that is in you, you activate it when we abide in God's presence. It's just like as we are here right now. When we abide in his presence, we experience and we are touched by the power of God. First Chronicles 16, First Chronicles 16, First Chronicles 16, verse 27. First Chronicles 16, verse 27. All right, we're going to look at that. And uh, there's power in the presence of God. Take note of that. We're to together in my name. I'm there in their midst. Hallelujah. So, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. And there's uh, what? Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and what? Gladness are in glory and honor. Strength talks about power are in his presence. Psalm 797, Psalm, Psalm 97, verse 5. There is no place like the presence of God. We go from strength to strength that appear to God in Zion. Psalm 97 verse 5. We see the power of God. The hill melt like was at the presence of the Lord. Talking about you. The mountain. That's why we come to church. Oh. It can't come here and go by the same. Headache, back pain, all the, all, they will disappear in his presence. Whether they pray for you, they don't pray for you. He said, at the presence of the Lord, the whole earth. Next verse. He said, the hill melt. That's mountain. Mountain of life. Mountain of barrenness. Mountain of delay. Mountain of rejection. Mountain of disappointment. They will be melted today in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, the heaven declares righteousness and all the people see his glory. In his presence, the mountain melt, like we sang earlier. So, the power of God is so, adapted when we abide in his presence. We we'll experience his power. Make God's presence your daily habitation. Spend time with God every day. You will carry his power. Listen to me. If you can pray 30 minutes every day of your life, just every day for one month, put together, you pray in the morning 15 minutes, come back, maintain the time. I give you 21 days. If you lay hands on the person, electric will enter. That's why we lay hands on the electric, electric, power will flow. It's not that we are somebody that has been wanting God. No, 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 no. We, this is how to activate it. This is how to activate it. You spend time in his presence. You spend time with God. In public place, like in, in a garden like this, and in the closest. People are too busy. Woke up in the morning. Bath, brush it, chop, chop. Out, come back, late, sleep, wake up. Just like that. 
running busy schedule Monday to Friday. Take time every day. Say, God, this message has touched me. I'm going to be giving you 15 minutes, 30 minutes of my time every day. Drop your phone. Drop the phone. Because it is one of the source of distraction. Activate the power of God by making his presence your habitation. Psalm 68 verse 8 Psalm 68 verse 8 I want to end with this scripture but I like the other one where it said the mountain melts at his presence mountain he said the earth shook and the heaven also dropped at what oh God I like this one the earth shook the heaven melt at his presence. If you're a man that always spend time with God, if he come and the earth will bow to you. If he come and the heaven will respond to you. No wonder Elijah the prophet was speaking. I said, let there not be rain. For three years and six months, by my word, he has spent time with God. At the time he said, before God whom I stand, He's a man that used to start, he's used to the presence of God. So when he makes declarations, angel backs him up. Heaven and earth respond to him. Leave that scripture there. Because I want you to understand that your coming to church is not wasting of your time. You are here to be incubated with the presence of God. You are here to be incubated with the presence of God. He said, the earth shook, the heaven also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God. Mountain Sinai's mountain moved by his presence. I don't know the mountain that is before you, before your marriage, before your finances, before your destiny, they shall be cleared in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we stand this morning? I want you to lift your hands and say, Father, fill me with your power. In the first Sabbath, we're talking about the power of God. We say that one of the ways you can activate it is by praying in the Holy Ghost. Is by praying. Elijah, a prayer of a righteous man, make it power available. Child of God, would you lift your voice and say, Father, I receive grace for consistency, for persistence in the place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, I receive grace Jesus, for consistency. In the place of prayer, would you lift your voice and pray right now? Ask God for that grace. Jeluka pata ladish, zinde prabado susi kapala, zika pata rabat iago doho shidaha, lembro do zuzinge bata riato siga baladash. I like you to lift your voice in prayer and ask the Holy Ghost and ask the Holy Ghost to come and take his place in your life. Would you lift your voice and pray? Katusi braba da sita kaba le brabo zuzie kepata balandish. I'm not hearing you pray, no. Pray. That mountain must melt, child of God. It's a mountain melt at his presence. We are in his presence right now. Every mountain of barrenness, mountain of sickness, mountain of delay, mountain of stagnation, mountain of disappointment, they shall be melted away today. Lift your voice and pray, child of God. Melt away in the name of Jesus. Every mountain of barrenness, every mountain of stagnation, every mountain of, stagnation, every mountain of, every mountain of disappointment, melt away, melt away in the name of Jesus. Melt away, 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 every mountain of sickness, melt away, melt away. Melt away. Je compte pas un gap de cadeaux. Melt away. Zoom zoom. Bata pati abarredi ke patush. 
melt away, melt away. Rakata kapa zeketo, ligada gada gada baba zakalada. Zata kapa ta, gada gaba osha. Lepre koto kapa ta. Edena mo zeketos, regada yama zene kobene yaka sokote. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 68 verse 8, he says something amazing. I'm going to use it to pray. He said the heaven shook and the earth shook at his presence. The earth is where you came from. The earth talks about where you emanate from. The earth talks about your foundation. They will be checking in his presence today. I'm telling you. The earth. The earth. The earth. I pray for somebody here. Give me that scripture there. Psalm 66, I mean 68, verse 8. Say, Father, every foundation, every foundation, foundational power, foundational power of my father's house, of my father's house, let it be shaken. Let it be shaken. Let every door, let every door, therein be open. Foundation. You're going to pray against your foundation of your Bible. In His presence, the earth shook, the earth shook. And the heaven also drop at the presence. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Father, Father, let the earthquake, let the earthquake, let your presence, let the power, let the power foundational power, power, in my land of nativity, my land of nativity let, it let it be shaken by your presence. Your presence. Pray us in the name of Jesus. Pray. You are let in this place. Pray. In the land of my nativity, let it be shaken. Let it be shaken. Let it be shaken. Powers from the, my land of nativity, from my land, from my father's land, let it be shaken. Let it be shaken. Every power it from my father's house, Lika Pata Dabosha, fighting against my career. Zila Pata Kabahida, Ea Pala Sekatona, Emanena Kasot de Penede. Elles I need your power. Let your power speak for me. Let your power speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Did I hear somebody say amen? Amen. In the first service, we took time to pray and activated the power of God. We are going to pray. Say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your power. Fill me with the power of God. Fill me with the power of God. Say, Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Fill me. Fill me. More of you. More of you. Less of me. Less of me. More of you. More of you. And less of me. Less of me. Pray us in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost. Fill me with your power. Holy Ghost. 